Hey everybody, Scott Luden with Supply Chain Now as we continue our coverage here at Gartner Supply Chain Symposium. It's the center of the universe for all things supply chain, at least this week. And I'm here with my friend, John Kelly with Autoscheduler AI. John, how you doing? Good, Scott. How are you? Great to see you. Uh, y'all, your organization has been on the move. I'm going to ask you about it in a minute, but I want to start uh, with a fun warm-up question because, John, we here, we did our homework on you, right? We got the best lurkers in the business. Grand Rapids, Michigan is your hometown. Is that right? It is. Beer City, USA. And now it's got everybody's attention out there. Everybody in supply chain. So 40 breweries yeah. across the area. Is that right? That's probably more than that. Okay. 40 breweries that uh, are probably on the map. Yeah. So, and you've got um, one of your favorites is? Uh, Founders, All Day IPA. Uh, it never hurts. <laughs> <laughs> all Day IPA. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, beyond the brewery scene, which is a vibrant one, what else do you love about living in the Grand Rapids area? You know, something that actually coincides with the brewery scene, Scott, is your know, Grand Rapids has been named like number one beer city USA. Okay. Also best place to raise a family. So, okay. you know, I don't know if there's a correlation there or not. Like maybe if you like beer, you can also raise a family. But, you know, from May until um, really September, October, best place on earth, winter Need a little bit of thick skin and, yeah. uh, you know, thick blood to stay warm. But uh, great town to drink beer, great town to, raise, uh, town to raise a family. You know, in my mind, those two things make perfect sense. You know, Me too. from that long weekend when you've had the kids all weekend and they've, they, you, you've kept, had to keep them from setting the house on fire. That's right. Hey, you need a good founder's beer, right? That's right. <laughs> it makes perfect sense. Uh, one other quick thing about you, John, the Detroit Lions. You're a devout Detroit Lions fan. And um, what a great couple of years they've had. Uh, what's your fearless prediction for the 2025 season? You know, I would love to say Super Bowl, right? You know, there's a running joke um, in Michigan for us Lions fans. The, the joke or trivia question is, let me ask you, Scott. So I was born in 1980. Okay. Mid-40s. Yeah. Okay. Before last year, how many playoff games do you think they had, they had won in my lifetime? Okay, so hang on a sec. Before last year, so like before 2024. That's right. And they had a really strong year. Um, I'm going to say one in your entire lifetime. One. That was 1991. Now, my dad was born in 1955. Okay. How many games do you think he had um, witnessed from a playoff victory perspective? Oh, John, that's such a great follow-up. I don't know. Same one. 1991. Oh, so we uh, tripled it last year with two wins. So now we have three. Okay. Right. And not very well last year. We lost to Washington, but this year, Super Bowl. Okay. Super Bowl. We're going to speak it out there in the universe. Super Bowl for all of our, I think all the country is pulling for Detroit Lions, right? I mean, you're becoming America's team, especially how it's going on down there in Dallas. But hey, I'll save that for another show. Um, and really quick aside, Barry Sanders, one of the best of all time. He left today. He, he, he got out was still gas in the tank and that's a great um a great uh do documentary out there uh, run berry run that's right it is it's a great one yes uh okay we gotta get we gotta talk about supply chain whether we like it or not john uh you've been in the supply chain tech space for quite some time done some big things there um i like to refer to this current era as the golden age of supply chain tech mainly because we don't know what's going to be like 30 to 40 you know, which will be even more golden i imagine but What's been in this era of innovation where the game is truly changing? What's one of the coolest things about being in this industry? Yeah. So, you know, over the course of the last five years or so, uh, if I had a dollar for every time I heard AI, 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 right, I probably wouldn't be here, right? I'd have my own kingdom somewhere, right? So, you know, with advanced mathematics, all these different AI, whether it's agentic AI or computer vision, what you can do now with fewer people and drive efficiency, I think is truly the golden age. I think the, the, the problem or the task that shippers have or buyers have is, you know, how do you actually figure out what technology works for me? Right. What does what, um, and actually drives value instead of key buzzwords like AI, right? A buzzword of AI doesn't necessarily drive value in of itself. It actually has to match your problems really well. So, you know, while I do agree with you, I think this is a golden age of AI with some of the backend technology that can actually drive uh, significant efficiencies. I, I could also, I mean, I'd hate to be a buyer. Uh, you know, there's a lot of great technologies out there that I'd have to weed through and actually figure out what they do. That's a great call out, John. Because um, what's old is new again, 
the selection process. You yeah. cannot mail in on the selection process, no matter what technology or solution that uh, we're looking to procure. And that's kind of one of, the, one of the things you mentioned. And what further complicates that is the tidal wave of solutions and te technologies out there. And of course, plenty of them touting, rightly or wrongly, AI uh, right. baked in it. Um, let's talk about the pain that's out there. We've got a ton of pain. A lot of pain. Um, to, <laughs> I feel like, uh, well, Clever Lang, I say this all the time. So folks, uh, bear with me as I say it for the hundredth time for John's benefit. You Are you a big Rocky fan? Yeah. Okay. In Rocky Two, Clever Lang was getting interviewed Right, be, being played by Mr. T, he's heard the interview the head of, the head of his uh, match with Rocky, and the reporter's like, "Can you predict the future? What, what's what's, what's going to happen with this match?" And Clubber Lang just looked at the camera and said one word: "Pain." Yeah, that's all he said. Yeah. And there's a t there's a ton of pain out in global supply chain, disjointed tech, uh, the pace, the, the the pace of velocity and the pressure that adds, especially on decision making. Right. Um, Pressure on our teams, mm -hmm. uh, workforce challenges. You know, even when you can, um, organizations are struggling to find and develop and retain the talent we need. And I know you see a lot of this, especially in the warehouse space. Speak to this pain that we're seeing. Yeah. Yeah. So I think supply chain leaders are, you know, they're being squeezed, right, on both directions. So, you know, customer expectations are now sky high, whether it's direct to consumer or B2B. Right. Right. Amazon's really changed the game. I'm going to order something right now and it's going to be at my doorstep in 15 minutes or I'm not ordering it, right? And I think that's actually cascaded to businesses as well, meaning I need to uh, do things more quickly, more cheaply, right? And there's a, there's a bunch of other factors that are actually contradictory to fast and cheap or fast and, and, and very inexpensive, which is, you know, a labor force that doesn't necessarily want to work in warehouses, right? Right. You have, you know, whether it's tariff issues or skew proliferation or this balance of people and automation and how to do that right, you know, that creates pain, right? You're being tasked to do more and you're also being tasked to actually drive down costs while doing more. Yeah. And, and pain. Yeah. Do more, uh, do it cheaper, do it faster and do it better. That's quite a, uh, it's painful. Yeah. Quite expectation. Yeah. And to your point, because Amazon and others, but Amazon in particular, there's a reason why the Amazon effect is so such a prevalent cliche, because it's very real, right? Um, I want to ask you about all of that pain that you were addressing, right? That uh, I know y'all work with a lot of movers, shakers out in the industry. They're addressing this pain. So that begs the question. Tell us about how auto scheduler, what your approach is, uh, in particular around supply chain orchestration. Yeah. Yeah, so it, it, auto scheduler has really created a category that we've called supply or warehouse orchestration, right? So we very much, um, you, you know, something that we didn't talk about in pain is there's disparate systems everywhere that really try to optimize what they do, right? TMSs try to optimize transportation. WMS tries to optimize warehouses, production systems or ERP systems or WES systems. They always try to optimize their little bubble, right? Right. What Auto Scheduler actually does is we connect all of those systems to enable you to actually see through a single pane view of glass. And we then take all that data and understand how should goods flow through and across these different disparate systems in the most efficient manner possible. Yeah. Right. It really enabling an efficient supply chain, uh, less labor. And we actually help wave work in a uh, like in tasks and sequences in order to drive optimal output, right? This is actually something that we all uh, always ask, uh, you know, some of our current customers or people that we're talking to is we say, "Hey Scott, tell me how optimal your warehouse is," and we get you know all kinds of answers like uh, no idea or it's probably pretty bad or sometimes they're okay, it's pretty good. And then you know the follow up question is. How close to perfectly efficient is that? But the answer is, I have no idea, right? Auto schedule actually drives perfectly efficient warehouse orchestration, given all those different systems and all the tasks that needs to be done, all the different constraints in order to ensure that you are running at peak efficiency at all times. Okay. That sounds terrific. It's music to my ears. Um, and the other thing I heard there as you were, kind of laying out your approach 
uh, auto scheduler is it doing away with a lot of the siloization. Correct. You know, everybody talks these days about how you know, we're going silo busting. However, I think in the digital supply chain era, in a weird counterintuitive way, we've almost created more silos because we're taking that bubbled approach mm -hmm. to systemization that you were talking about earlier. Huh? Correct. Yeah, totally agree. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's, we were talking about this analogy um, before we sat down here today. And uh, I'm a big baseball fan. My, my Atlanta Braves had a tough start to the year. Who's your team? Detroit Tigers. Oh, man, the Tigers. You had a guy hit a four, four home runs not too long ago. Uh, There's actually two home runs in the ninth inning for the first time. That's what it was. That's how it was. Okay. He's on top of it. Supply chain, baseball, football. Um, there's this phrase that I've heard most. It's a sports analogy, but I've heard it most in baseball, especially when rookies uh, you know, make their way up through the, the minor leagues and finally they break out and get a cup of coffee in the major leagues. And, and the game, the pace and the velocity of the game in the major leagues is so much different than, you know, the farm system and college base, all that stuff, right? And oftentimes they talk about once they're able to break through the wall, that rookie wall, they're able, these rookies, once they kind of got their head wrapped around the, the pace, that they're able to slow the game down, right? And in baseball and sports, that means they're able to contribute because they've got, they're able to have developed to a point with new skills and mentorship and experience to be able to handle a game and perform at a higher level. What I'm hearing with what y'all do at Auto Scheduler is you're working with organizations on some level to slow down supply chain velocity for their team members so that they can find more success easier and protect that home that home team time. Yeah, your time the family so they're not killing themselves working overtime. Is that an accurate analogy or not? Yeah, so I would say that's accurate with one contradiction, okay. right? We are slowing down to speed up, right? All companies want more throughput, assuming demands there or, you know, higher production, manufacturing, right? So, you know, what you're getting is how do you actually slow it down for the associates, for the planners, for the, um, for the general manager, right, right, right. right? And if we are actually giving you, Scott, um, you know, an organized plan that we actually re-optimize every 15 minutes. So everyone knows, uh, where do I need to go? How many people do I need to put in this specific task in order to reach specific output, right? That's effectively slowing things down. It sort of takes away, hey, I need to think through this and I need to stop and understand what I need to do. And it just says clear as day, hey, we need this many people doing this task at yep. this time in order to drive efficiency. So that effectively sort of takes some of that mental and it, it helps you mentally slow down, understand exactly what you need to do and actually then helps you on the outside or on the output side, speed up. So that's an excellent, uh, excellent nuance on it because the game hasn't slowed down. It's probably sped up. Yes. But to our people and our teams, they're able to perceive and keep up with the descent or with the, the game faster and make better decisions. So in their minds, it feels like the game slowed down. So, uh, yeah. And it, like, here's another analogy, right? Whether you work in just a, a distribution center or even a production facility that has, let's say, a plant-based warehouse, yes. this is probably common on a daily or certainly weekly or monthly basis where you would have a quote unquote fire drill. Yeah. All hands on deck. We need to get this outbound delivery. In there, done it. Oh, shoot. We don't have enough inbound raw materials to support a production line. How do we actually sequence events to optimize? And what happens is forced overtime, right? Your costs go up. You have huge margin leakage, right? With auto scheduler, we actually look at uh, all these tasks that need to be managed over the next 48 hours and say, this is what needs to happen, right? So you can slow down. You can actually. This isn't to say that fire drills aren't going to happen, right? You know, uh, raw material shortages or whatever are going to happen. We can't fix it. That's right. But we can help. Because you could fix that, all that stuff. You could really add a couple more zeros to the price dial. Uh, there's still probably a lot more. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Uh, so all that stuff's going to happen. But auto schedule puts organizations in position. Correct. To most effectively manage their workforce uh, reduce travel and things like that a most efficient manner. Love it. Okay. Um, all right. I know you're here at Gartner shaking hands, talking, sitting down, meeting with the movers and shakers, but after Gartner, uh, folks can connect with you for a variety of things beyond getting your insights. They can learn about, uh, autoscheduler.ai and, and some of the cool things you are doing. And 
Y'all got a free warehouse optimization um, uh, session that y'all are offering. So how can, whether they want to do anything with that or talk Beer City USA with yeah. How can they connect with each other? Well, we can always start Beer City, right, just to, uh, you know, ease into the conversation. But Love it. Yeah, so here at Gartner, we're actually booth uh, 922. Okay. We're actually going on stage two here in about 10 minutes, so about one thirty local time. So if uh, anyone's watching live, right, head over that way. Um, outside or after the show, you can reach me directly at john.kelly at autoscheduler.ai. That's a mouthful. I don't know if I've ever said that out loud. That's a mouthful. Uh, or our website at autoscheduler.ai. Awesome. It is just that easy. You'll enjoy talking with John just as much as I have. Make sure you talk Beer City football, especially Detroit Lions football with John. Get his prediction. But he's saying Super Bowl in 2025. We'll see. But John Kelly with autoscheduler.ai. I uh, really appreciate your time here today. Enjoy Gartner Supply Chain Symposium. And folks, stay with us as we continue our coverage here at the Center of the Universe for All Things Supply Chain, at least this week, Gartner Supply Chain Symposium 2025. <laughs>